Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. It really is. Why don't you take your Bibles? I'm not going to do any preliminaries. I'm going to go right to the word of the Lord today. Praise God. It is good to be here. Psalm 68 and 6. Psalm 68 and 6. My God. God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Matthew chapter 12, verse number 43. Matthew 12, verse 43. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man... He goes through dry places, seeking rest, and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes out and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. One more scripture, chapter. Psalms chapter 133. Psalms 133. Behold how good, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That's what it says. Exclamation point. It is like the precious oil. Upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon. Descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded his blessing, life forevermore. You may be seated this morning. This was born in my heart just a few weeks ago, and it uh, it has not left me. It has changed my praying to some degree, and I don't mind my praying being changed. I really don't. I find myself saying some things that, you know, I've said in the past, but much more consistently to God. On Wednesday night, we spoke to this congregation pastorally, pastorally. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not transformed, or be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable acceptable and perfect will of God. 
I think this is a continuation of that in this house today. The Bible teaches us, Paul brings it out in Corinthians chapter 11, when he begins to talk about divine order. And he says, I want you to know in 11 verse 3, I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. And that the head of the woman is man. And that the head of Christ is God. Some of the things that Brother East talked to us about just recently. Amen. The divine order and plan of God. I am not going to be using this chapter here, this, these verses, because it begins, not because I don't want to, but because it just, I've got what I need out of it. But let me just say this much. Hallelujah. Ladies, there is a symbolic representation in this chapter that is part of the divine order of God. When God starts talking about the covering and the hair of the lady, he says long hair, which is uncut hair. And he tells us that it is symbolically representing, amen, submission. It's a symbol of authority on her head, as it says in the New King James Version, verse 10. And then it gives us this peculiar scripture phrase, because of the angels. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, in this house today, that there is a world that is very real that you cannot see. As we play on this planet, as we do our own thing on this planet, there is another world that is observing, that is watching what is happening here. It is very aware of God. Very aware of God. Everybody say it's very aware of God. Bible tells us in James 2.19, Thou believest in one God, the devils also believe. I want you to know today, the devil is a oneness believer. He believes in one God. Thou doest well, the devils also believe, and they tremble. While we sit here today, in this room are angels. Now, I know you don't see them. be nice if some of you would see them. But there are two kinds of angels today. Good angels, bad angels. Real simple, real basic. That's, that's me. That's me. And they are observing just how closely you follow God. They are watching to see if you are in submission to God. I'm not talking about being in submission to the pastor right now. I'm talking about being in submission to God. You see, these angels know. They know his power. They know what he's like. They know from firsthand experience that when you defy God, that when you rebel against God, that he will act, and he will cast down. And they have experienced that very thing. Do not take lightly today what the word of the Lord says. You claim to be a believer. Everybody seems today to be a believer. But the Bible tells us in the book of Colossians, amen, that he is the head of the body. Everybody say he's the head. Of the body. I'm referring to Jesus, the church, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. Hallelujah. I am told in the book of Peter that I am to follow in his footsteps. I cannot duplicate deity today. I am not God. But I have 
not been told to follow in God's steps. I have been told to follow in the steps of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We're not going into Peter this morning, but amen, that's what we are told. Jesus himself said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. That's the steps that I am to follow in. I must submit my will to God. I must do his work, not my work. I must follow him with all of my heart. 24 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus spoke to us in John 14, he said to them after they got into the question of where he's going and who he is, and he says, Have you not known me, Philip? Have I been so long with you that you're asking me to show you the Father? Amen. He says, He says to him, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. If you want to know what it means to be in submission to God, all you've got to do is look into the scripture and you will see a man, amen, that submitted himself in obedience, the scripture says, even to the death of the cross. Hallelujah. My God, I'm coming against spirits in this house today. And unfortunately, some of you brought those spirits in this house today. Some of you don't realize just how close you are to the enemy being able to take your life from you. Not physically, but destroy a spiritual walk with the Lord. My God, my God, my God. I don't stand here as Bubba this morning. I don't stand here as the laughing guy that likes to joke with you today. I don't stand here as the fat man. I stand here as a man of God. Hallelujah. Anointed of God. Called of God. Called to pastor this church and to lead this church. Now you listen to me this morning in this house. The word of God says to remember those who rule over you. Hallelujah, that's what it says. It also says, obey those who rule over you and be submissive. Why? For they watch for your soul. I'm right. Every morning I get up, the first words almost out of my, my, my mouth invariably are, even as I lay in my bed, oh God, I want to submit to you today. I don't want there to be any trace in me of rebellion. I don't want to stand and defy you in any way today, God. Help me to follow you with all of my heart. Help me to submit myself to you. My God, my God, hallelujah. You don't understand, some of you, the principle that I speak to you today is very holy. You can have all the outward appearance of being holy and have a heart that's so rebellious to God. My God, that's not how I want to be. I want to have a heart I want to be that living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto him. It is my reasonable service. We got issues, ladies and gentlemen. We got issues because a lot of us today do what we want to do. We lay it out as a standard and a rule. But I'm here to tell you, it's deeper than your preacher. It's greater than your preacher. Learning to submit. 
Learning to acquiesce to the will of God, to the word of God, to the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I read in Psalm 68 and 6 to you today, it says that the rebellious dwell in a dry land. My God. I realize now why when I was a young man, I had got the Holy Ghost at the age of nine, got baptized at the age of nine. But my life had so many seeds of rebellion in it. So much defiance. I mean, maybe not in your face defiance as I see some of you today. But amen. But no, it was in my life. And I remember, I remember my early 20s going to a camp meeting, Nathaniel Urshan preaching on the coming of the Lord. And I remember going to the altar. And I also remember, I remember, so help me God, I remember how empty I felt as I said the words of many Pentecostals. I even spoke in tongues. I just found out how shallow I could be. And some of you today, help me, some of you today can speak in tongues and still not submit to God. I'm living proof of that. But the Bible says that the rebellious dwell in a dry land. I didn't know where I was at. I didn't know what had taken place in me. I didn't know why I was so defiant. Amen. So disrespectful. Maybe not with verbal words as some are. But amen. My whole spirit, my whole makeup, amen, was rejecting what God wanted me to do. I want you to know something today. Rebellion destroys a relationship with God. You don't understand why when I talk to some of you apostolics and Pentecostals, and yes, I make some remarks. I really, you know, when I say I hate you, I don't really hate you, but I understand the spirit that you carry every day with you that defies God. Why? Because I've been in that place. I've been in that place where I was defiant to God, doing my own thing, and then coming to church and even crying, but never changing My God, I am here and only here because of the grace and the mercy of a great God who even would pursue me down into the dry place. Hallelujah. You see, the unclean spirit goes out of a man and he goes through the dry place. What's he looking for? A place of rest. The rebellious individual, where does he dwell? In the dry place. You gotta understand, mamas and daddies, when your children get angry and they continue to get angry, you need to do something about that. Little Johnny and little Susie, when they get out of control, you need to check that business because you do not understand what is taking place. Oh, now it's not a problem. But when they're 25 and they're still acting like that, you will not understand what is taking place. The enemy has got such inroads in their life that he controls them and they find themselves going into rages. Why? Because their spirit is so rebellious and they're now in a dry land where the enemy dwells who looks for the place of rest. I know what I'm talking about today. I have seen on your face. You may think that you mask it, but no, it's very, very clear to me where you're at. I may not say something to you. Some of you need to understand. I'm only going to go to those that want to change. 
I have learned, it's taken me a long time in my life. If you don't want to change, there's nothing I can do to change you. My mama told me a story so many years ago, and it is stuck in my mind today. Her pastor was a great man of God, S.G. Norris. And S.G. Norris, there were a lot of young ladies in his church. But he always used to go to my mama and another lady named Lorraine. And he would go to them and he would correct them and he would talk to them. And finally one day they said to him, Pastor, why don't you say anything to those other girls? Because they just act just as bad as we do. And his answer to them was, you listen. difficult Bible studies I've ever had in my life is when somebody wants to talk when they ought to shut up. I don't care how much you know about the Bible. My question is how much of the Bible do you practice? And if you can only speak what you practice, you can put it in a thimble. So, so God help me. I don't want to dwell in a dry place. I don't want to be where my enemy's at. And I'll do whatever I have to do to submit myself to him. To submit my... I I am not in charge today. Do you hear me? I am not in charge today. You think you're in charge. But the day will come. It's going to be revealed to you that who really is in charge. Because one day... You can defy him now. One day, you can be rebellious now, but one day, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess and say. So defy him now. Be rebellious against him now. I'm going to practice submission in this house, in my life. May I say to you today that... uh, If we'd all practice submission, we'd all get along. It's the truth. Before it tells, before it tells the wife to submit to the husband, it first says submit to one another. We have a tendency to ignore that verse. And it's right there. It's just above the other verse. So when you start spouting off about your wife supposed to submit to you, your wife, you need to ask him politely, reverently, are you submitting to God? Yeah. Now, if you're not submitting to God, I will give you the words of the apostle Peter and the other apostles when they were told no longer to preach and teach In the name of Jesus Christ. We ought to obey God rather than man. So if you want your wife to submit to you, you better be on your knees submitting to our God. Every facet of your life better be submitted to Him. You see... In the spiritual realm, there's different rules. There's different rules. There's different rules in what you got going on here on this planet. Amen. Israel, who is, amen, the natural of what we are to live out in the spirit. So much is so rich. In Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse number 10, amen, God has said to them through Moses, for the land which you go to to possess Is not like, everybody say not like, the land of Egypt. How they operate down here in Egypt, you ain't going to be operating like that when you get to Canaan. I'm here to tell you, if you're a child of God today, you're not to operate how they operate on this planet. You're not to operate like the neighbor. You're not to operate like the government of the United States of America. You're not to operate like anybody else that chooses to be rebellious. Why? Because you belong to something greater and better than anything that this world has, amen, to offer. So when you go in to possess the land, 
It's not like the land of Egypt from which you know, amen, where you've come, where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. In other words, if you know anything about Egypt, the Nile Delta, it's the area where the Israelites, the land of Goshen, where they lived, it was fertile. Why was it fertile? Because of the silt and the water from the Nile River. But when you get down to Canaan, it's not going to be like that. It's not going to, you're not going to function like you functioned in Egypt. That was the struggle, amen, of the wilderness. They couldn't get away from functioning like Egypt. They always functioned like Egypt. Egypt operates on a different plane than the things of God. Egypt doesn't function like God functions. Hallelujah. It has no concepts of God. It's falling a myriad of gods. But ladies and gentlemen, today, that's why Paul would write to us and tell us we need to not conform to this world, but we need to transform. Why? Because, amen, we're not going to function like this planet functions. What is one of the indications? What is one of the indications that Jesus is coming soon? Rebellion. Children will no longer honor their parents. May I be so blunt as to say I won't honor them either, the way they act. You're to be an example of submission. And if you cannot submit, and then you turn and tell your children they need to submit to your authority and rule, you hypocrite. You hypocrite. How dare you tell that child that it needs to submit to you when you will not submit to the authority of God? You're a hypocrite. God, I'm getting in deep water now. I may not get out of this water either. So when you get to that land, when you cross over, and that's what we did, folks. We crossed over. If you're a child of God, you crossed over. My God. My God. My God. You crossed over. When you get to that land, you see, in this land, the Lord your God cares. He cares for this land. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it in this land. From the beginning of the year to the very end of the year. When we walk in submission to God, you are going to have the blessing of God. It's going to happen. Why? Because God wants to bless his people. But he cannot and will not bless rebellion. He told them that if you will earnestly, verse 13, obey my commandments, which I command you today, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. He said, I'll give you, everybody say, I'll give you the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the latter rain that you may gather in your grain, your new wine and your oil. I will send grass in your fields for your livestock that you may eat and be filled. Then he says to them, Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. We say, I ain't got no idols in my house. If you're rebelling against God, you've got an idol in your house and it's called you. You're the idol. If you cannot submit to God... If you will not obey what his word says, you don't need a a, a statue in your house. You're the statue. I'll never, most of you probably don't even know who Eliamin is. He's a man with many titles. He's Papa Doc, he's the general, he's this, he's that. And he was also a murderous, evil man in Uganda. Amen. Finally lost the throne, kingship. And he, he just had so many titles. I don't care what you call yourself. If you're not in submission to God, you ain't getting control of my life. Am I doing okay? Is this, did I ruffle your feathers? Did I make you feel bad? I'm preaching to you today. And the thing is, 
Once I'm done with this, I've been the watchman on the wall. It's on your shoulders in, baby, what you do with it. Judges, the end of Judges, concludes with these words, and I've used this before. But it says, in those days, Judges 21 and 25, there were no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. If you read Judges, it is the most messed up people that you... I mean, you got guys cutting up their wives. you got guys doing all kinds of weird stuff. you got them stoning. you got them fighting, and they're all God's people. It's crazy. It's, it's just a mess. You understand that's what happens. That's what happens when we will not submit to God's life. It's no wonder we get messed up lives. It's no wonder we got no peace in our home. It's no wonder that everything puts us into some kind of war. And I'm not talking about Iran and Iraq. And the, I'm talking about in our home, in our lives, and in the lives of our children. Here's the solution real quick. Dad... Get on your knees and cry out to God. Say, I submit to you. And then live it. You see, in Judges, they have been warned. Judges 3 and 7 says, The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God. They served the Baals and the Asherahs. Amen. Amen. Verse 12, And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord strengthened the hand of Eglon, king of Moab, against Israel because they'd done evil in the sight. What, what happens? Amen. When you rebel against God, you start walking through dry places. And God is not there to give you rain. Amen. And the enemy is there and he says, man, I'm taking advantage of this situation because I've been looking for a place to rest. And now I have found it. Amen. I recognize the spirit that they carry. It's the same spirit I got. And so when I move on in, they ain't going to tell me to leave because they're going to feel comfortable. With that spirit. God help us. Help us. God help us. I heard a statement by my dear brother Jeremiah yesterday, man. I said, I got to use that. He didn't know I was going to preach today. I, I talked a little bit to him as we sat over breakfast. But hey, man, he made a statement and it rang in my heart. Before you can have dominion in the spirit realm. You must have dominion within. Let me run it by you again. Before you can have dominion in the spirit realm, you must have dominion within. And if you don't got dominion within, don't you go out and try to mess with the devil. Because he will destroy you. One of the verses... Are they sleeping? Are you awake? Come on up here, Robert, and help me for a minute. I love my boys. I'm taking them home late this next week. I love my boys. I love them dearly. I really do. It would kill me if they wouldn't serve God. It would kill me. It really would. It would kill me. Do you remember what it says in Proverbs 25 and 28? Let me help you out. I know. He who has no rule over what? That's it, buddy. Thank you. You can thank you. You can go sit down. I tell my grandkids, they have moments. Unfortunately, so does their grandfather. <laughs> if you can't control yourself, you're dead meat. You can use the name of Jesus. You think that's going to scare the devil? So what do you mean? We're supposed to cast him out. If you are not submitted to the name of Jesus, why would the devil even be afraid of you? Have you ever read in Acts 19? The seven sons of Sceva? We adjure you in the name that Paul preaches. Ha! The devil probably laughed. Ha! Ha! Who are these in? Seven of them. Oh boy. 
Watch what I do now. And he proceeded to beat them and strip them of their clothes and they fled. And then the Bible says great fear came on. You see, if you're not in submission to God, you really don't have a relationship going, ladies and gentlemen. You got a battle on your hands. You're defying him. Now, Brother Leo, me and you right now, nobody else is in the house. <laughs> when the kids misbehave and you say you do this or else, and they defy you, are you feeling like hugging them and kissing and smooching on them? Not really. Ask me the question. Not really. Not really. And I'm a man. And no 40-pound kid is going to tell me what to do. All I got is just fall on him. <laughs> Officer, I just fell down. <laughs> would you pray for, would you help me pray for this boy? <sighs> you know what would happen if everybody in this room would finally get control of their spirit? We'd have revival. When you walk down the street, every devil in this place would know who you were. And they'd want to get away from you. The reason they don't run is they know you are not submitted to God. Oh God. Yes, we do, sis. And it always starts with ourselves. Quit blaming that husband. There are two reasons why you can't be delivered. Two, just two reasons. Two reasons why you can't have victory over the enemy. Two, just two reasons. Just two. One, you don't submit. And the other, you don't resist. If you resist without submitting, you can't have victory. If you submit and you don't resist, you can't have victory. You cannot separate them. It's submit to God. Then it's resist the devil and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. You need the Holy Ghost today? I'm going to tell you what the first thing you got to do. You got to submit. God doesn't give you the Holy Ghost like you want it. He gives you like he wants to give it to you. And if he wants you to run back and forth and bounce off the walls, that's what, if he wants you turning flips, if he wants your nose running and your eyes tearing when he fills you with the Holy Ghost, that's how it's going to be, sir, ma'am. You don't control God. You don't tell God what to do. And so the apostle Peter is preaching to these guys and he's, and, and he's, and he gets in trouble for preaching the name of Jesus. I already used the example. I come back to it. And, and they say, we, we told you not to preach in his name anymore. And he appeals to a greater authority. Well, we ought to obey God rather than man. And then he makes this statement in verse 32. He says, we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost, it ain't my fault. It ain't this church's fault. You ain't obeying him. And if you'll submit to him, You'll get the Holy Ghost. Simple as that. I don't give the Holy Ghost. God does that. So, you got to do something about yourself. You're going to leave this house. You're going to forget what I said because the enemy's just waiting to pluck this stuff right out of your mind. He's waiting right now to take everything that's been said in this room away from you. 
He wants you to stay like you are because he wants to destroy you. And he knows if he can keep you in the dry place, that's what's going to happen. Do you understand? It works like this. So what happened? When Elijah, the man of God, the Tishbite came, he said, God, they ain't serving you. They have been so stinking rebellious for so long. God, does not your word say that you will cause the rain to stop? And so Elijah prays, stop the rain, God. And he was praying the will of God. And the rain stopped. For three and a half years, there was no rain. And he wasn't being ugly. He was merely walking with God. How do I know? You got ravens feeding you. Ravens don't go around feeding people. God is protecting him and providing for this man of God. And then the day came that he issued the challenge. Who is God? Who are you going to submit to? And many of you know the story. He builds the altar after the, the priest of Balaam and all that, that unholy horde. Amen. All day long praying to their God and nothing happened. He douses the altar with water. And it fills the trenches that he's dug around. It douses, it soaks and saturates the, the sacrifice, the wood, the stone. And then he prays 63 words. When a man is submitted to God, he don't have to pray a couple years to get an answer. 63 words. And the fire falls. And everybody, everybody's on their face saying, the Lord, He is God. And for just a moment, Israel submitted to God. And that same man of God prayed the rain down. I'm coming home. So the psalmist writes in Psalms 133, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. How good it is. And he says it's like the precious oil upon the head. Gentlemen, ladies, you want to operate in this house. You want to be a part of what this church is doing. It has one head, physical in this building. And he's all looking at him, and he's hard to hide. Amen. We don't got ten heads, fifteen heads. You got one head. And the anointing flows out of that head and down. In other words, if you cannot listen to your pastor, you are in a place of rebellion, and the anointing of God cannot flow through you. And you are headed for the dry place. It's like that precious oil upon the head, running down upon the beard, the beard of Aaron, and running down on the edge of his garments. Do you know what was on the high priest? Do you know how they felt about Israel? They had an ephod. And on that ephod were twelve precious stones, and each of them represented the twelve, one of the twelve tribes of Israel. And they were over his heart to constantly remind him, these are God's people. And the oil ran down. And then onto the edge of his garment, down his shoulder, and covered those stones. You cannot be blessed of God if you cannot submit to God's plan and God's order. You cannot. And then he says, it's like the dew of Hermon. Mount Hermon was 200 miles away from Jerusalem. 200 miles away. Hallelujah. Descending upon the mountains of Zion. 
Mountains of Zion were not as high as Mount Hermon. It is said by travelers that in the Holy Land, the morning dew that comes off of Mount Hermon is like a hard rain that fell, for it saturates everything. You want anointing? You want the Spirit of God to work in you? Follow God's plan. Follow God's plan. He'll saturate you. He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. In fact, God's people, when they are saturated, will walk in the Spirit. And they'll forget the externals. And they'll major on the eternal things of the Spirit. It is a shame when we as believers get tripped up by little things. It is a shame. You know, our goal is to reach somebody that doesn't know Jesus. That's our goal, my friend. That's our goal, to help somebody find God. To help somebody to know the joy of the Holy Ghost. To help somebody to know that when they're baptized in the name of Jesus, all their sins are washed away. I don't got time to mess with small things. I don't got time to get in your messes. That's what the enemy wants me to do. So if you want to live in your mess, you live there. But I'm telling you, it's leading you to a dry place. I'm moving on. I'm going to walk with you, Jesus. We used to sing the song years ago, Sister Janice. Let me walk with you, Jesus. Don't ever leave me alone. For without you, I can never make heaven my home. And there's other parts of that verse, that song. That's where I'm at today, Jesus. I got to submit to you. I got to hear you. I do not want to dwell in a dry place. I've been there in a good place to live. But if you'll submit to God, God will allow the dew of Hermon to saturate you. I'm not, I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm telling you. And many of you others in this house, that's your biggest problem. You have fought against authority all your life. You've allowed bitterness and anger to control everything that you do. And you did not understand. That's, that's the dry place. And that's what the enemy wants to do. Is take you to the dry place. You can get the Holy Ghost in this house. If you'll submit to God. Help us, Father. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, God. Ah, oh, God. Let's reach out to him here. Let's submit ourselves. Have- Bible symbols. Symbolic objects. The rainbow, a symbol of God's covenant. A stairway, a symbol of the way to God. Thunder, lightning, clouds, and smoke, symbols of God's majesty. Thunder, a symbol of God's voice. Trumpets, a symbol of God speaking. The pillar of cloud and fire, a symbol of guidance. A throne. A symbol of God's glory. Dry bones. A symbol of spiritual death. White hair. A symbol of wisdom. The wind. A symbol of the Holy Spirit. Fire. A symbol of the Holy Spirit. Stars and lampstands, symbols of God's ministers. A signet ring, a symbol of authority. Arrows, symbols of God's judgments. A scepter, a symbol of God's rule. The capstone. 
symbol of preeminence. A rock, a symbol of stability. The human body, a symbol of interdependence. Grass, a symbol of human frailty. Symbolic creatures, the serpent, a symbol of Satan's subtlety. Locust, a symbol of God's judgment. Beast, symbols of earthly kingdoms. A dove, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. A slam, a symbol of Jesus Christ's sacrifice. Symbolic actions, breaking a jar, a symbol of the destruction of Jerusalem. The cursing of a fig tree, a symbol of judgment. Washing hands, a symbol of innocence. Being thirsty, a symbol of spiritual need. Baptism, used for salvation and a symbol of cleansing. The Lord's Supper, a symbol of union with Christ. Anointing, a symbol of empowering by God's Spirit. Harvesting, a symbol of judgment day. Tearing garments, a symbol of anger and sorrow. Spitting, a symbol of contempt. Shaking off dust, a symbol of rejection. Sitting in sackcloth and ashes, a symbol of repentance. Lifting of hands, a symbol of prayer. Covering the head, a symbol of submission. Symbols expressing God's nature and character, God's face, a symbol of his presence. God's arm or hand, a symbol of his power. God's eye, a symbol of his awareness. God's ear, a symbol of God's listening. God bless you. Thanks for watching.